Curious case of the temporal terrors by signal. It was dark. The occasional clatter of a horse and hansom could be heard outside over the rain pattering on the cobbles. Distant thunder sounded. Fortescue lit his pipe, dropped the match into the hearth which was dark and cold, and turned to face his guests. You, you disbelieve my tale, I see, he said gruffly. Lady Ocarana snorted. Only a fool would believe that tale. A time machine, indeed. What nonsense. Lady Harmony nodded and glared at Fortescue. You brought us all the way from Westminster to hear this drivel. You were once a respected scientist. What happened, Fortescue? You've gone peculiar since Lady Fortescue was kidnapped by those pygmy warriors on your trip up the Mbwebwe River. It was Fortescue's turn to glare. It's not like you to open old wounds, Harmony dear. I'll have you know that it was to rescue my beloved lady that I invented this accursed time machine in the first place. At this moment, the door opened, and Fortescue's butler, Tibble, appeared, carrying a tray. Brandy, sir, for Mr. Frangy Panny, and sweet sherry for the two ladies. Thank you, Tibble or Bean. Just put the drinks on the table. Of course, sir. If you'll not be requiring my services further this evening, sir, I may retire. If you wouldn't mind waiting for a few moments, Tibble, your input here may help to prove a point. No imposition, sir. I'm happy to be of service. Tibble placed the tray of drinks on the low table and stood quietly in the corner. Frangy Panny leaned across and handed a drink to Lady Ocarina and Lady Harmony, who were seated on either side of him. He sipped his own brandy and said, Now, Fortescue, I've known you for some years. You're not given to such flights of fancy, but even I find this time machine tale of yours somewhat hard to believe. Perhaps if you could give us a demonstration of this incredible device? Fortescue blinked. Surely you noticed that large carnivorous lizard in the parlor as we finished our supper? Frangy Panny smiled benignly. Now, Fortescue, you, you may have fooled the ladies here, but dressing one of your servants in a rubber suit and having him scream loudly and eat Mr. Humboldt like that is hardly going to convince an old hunter like me that you've got a time machine. Mr. Humboldt must be quite a card to agree to such a base jape as his own demise. It really was most macabre. No, really, Franny, it, it was a velocitra. There are still bits of Mr. Humboldt in the hallway. Go have a look. Tibble coughed apologetically. If you will excuse my interruption, sir, the uh, ape man, if you will, has disposed of the remainder of Mr. Humboldt, sir, and, and is currently dangling off one of the chandeliers in the main hall, making loud hooting noises. Frangy Panny leaned back and looked smug. You see, Fortescue, your evidence conveniently disappears. Lady Harmony leaned forward and sipped daintily from her glass. And and where is this Velcro rabbit thing now, Master Fortescue? Uh, surely you can produce this as evidence? Fortescue brightened. Of course. Tibble, please go and fetch the Velisoptera. He pondered for a moment. You may wish to use the larger of my falconry gloves. You'll find it in the cupboard under the stairs. Tibble paled, but without a falter in his voice said, I thank you most graciously for your consideration, sir. Unfortunately, the Velisoptera is at this stage being dismembered by the pack of saber-toothed tigers in the master bedroom. I would suggest that you use the guest room tonight, sir, when you retire. Fortescue waved him quiet, somewhat more impatiently than was perhaps warranted, and pointed his pipe at Lady Ocarina. I suppose you demand to see evidence of my travels in time also? Lady Ocarina looked thoughtful for a moment and brushed away a three-foot-long dragonfly that chose that exact moment to alight upon her chin. Not at all, she said, for I happen to have suddenly realized that your tale, far-fetched though it may be, is actually true. Lady Harmony and Frangy Panny stared in wonder at Lady Ocarina. Why, my dear, said Frangy Panny, 
I am, of course, far too gallant and chivalrous to doubt your veracity, but perhaps you could explain the reasoning behind this most strange declaration. Tibble coughed politely. <clears throat> If you would excuse me, sir, I appear to be unable to continue partaking in this discussion as I am currently being consumed by a rather sizable anaconda. Fortescue nodded. I understand, Tibble. You may retire for the evening. Uh, take tomorrow off if you're not feeling better. Thank you, sir. Fortescue turned back to Lady Ocarina. Indeed, madam, although I already know the veracity of my own statements, I, I would be interested to hear why you have changed your mind. Lady Ocarina smiled broadly. Actually, Fortescue, it was your pipe. Fortescue removed the pipe from his mouth and looked at it in faint surprise. Of course, this pipe was given to me by the agrarian tree people of the late Plasticine era, but by heavens, how did you know? Well, Mr. Ocarina is quite a connoisseur of pipes, as you well know. You can't live with a man like that for 40 years without picking up a thing or two about pipes and pipe smoking. I spotted the rough wood and the carvings of Olmolco, the ancient agrarian tree people god of vices that adorn the bowl. Frangy Panny gasped. My dear lady, I do believe you're right. He leapt up, startling the ornithalistes, which had curled up asleep in his lap. The pipe is a dead giveaway. My word, sir, you do have a time machine. Fortescue beamed, glad to have won back the confidence of his friends. But I must admit to having another ace up my sleeve, if you ladies will please excuse the gambling reference. The ladies nodded in a most ladylike manner. Lady Harmony spoke. Indeed, Mr. Fortescue, what would this <laughs> ace be? Uh, surely we do not require further proof. While I may know very little about pipes myself, I have full confidence in the expertise of Lord Frangy Panny and Lady Ocarina. The door to the room opened again, and in walked Lady Fortescue. Her graceful entry was marred somewhat by the Aziotis Nemectensis that was sitting on her shoulder, making plaintive mewing noises. I believe that I would be that ace up his sleeve, though indeed I do deplore such reference to the vices of the common man in such polite company. She reached up and picked up the Aziotis Nemectensis carefully by the scruff of its neck, and placed it on the floor, where it immediately set off after a passing baby dinosaur. Lady Fortescue laughed gaily. No need to look so shocked, my old friends. She walked up to Fortescue and poked him playfully in the stomach. Indeed, I was captured by the pygmy warriors of the Mamibwe River and spent many dark nights locked in their larder, waiting to become part of a four-course dinner. But Fortescue here came charging in with a horde of screaming agrarian tree people and rescued me. It was a most dashing sight that brought such a stirring to my blood. She sighed and then looked a little puzzled. By the way, I just passed Tibble in the main hall. He seemed to be struggling with a large snakeskin sleeping bag and looked most distressed. Fortescue smiled with quiet pride and clasped Lady Fortescue's hand firmly to his chest. Don't worry about Tibble. He has his foibles, but a more loyal servant you will never find. I'm just happy that everything can now get back to normal and I can dismantle the time machine. Frangy Panny looked shocked for a moment and almost dropped his brandy. Surely not Fortescue. He stepped casually aside as a mastodon thundered past and smashed through a nearby wall, squishing Lady Harmony where she stood. Such an incredible invention could benefit mankind no end. Think of the prestige you will receive when you present it to the scientific community. Alas, Fraggy Panny, I fear that mankind is not yet ready to have control of the time winds. I would hate to think what would happen if some unprincipled cad got hold of a time machine. No, it must be dismantled for now, though I shall certainly keep the plans in a safe place should I decide that mankind has matured enough. Fraggy Panny nodded. You are so much wiser than I, Fortescue. Come then, let us retire to the drawing room, finish this fine brandy, smoke a cigar, and celebrate Lady Fortescue's return. Indeed, exclaimed Lady Ocarina. Such a happy day, though I believe we ladies should refrain from the consumption of any more sherry. She looked embarrassed for a moment. I believe that Lady Harmony may have imbibed a little too much and is now somewhat the worse for wear. Such a dainty wee thing. Lady Fortescue cried, and she looked so peaceful there, asleep under that rubble. 
Come, let us not wake her with our revelry. Let us retire to the drawing room and sing happy songs to accompany Mr. Fortescue on the accordion. And with that they left, with the feather light sound of the rain pattering on the cobbles outside, and thunder rolling further into the distance, all heard over the delicate sound of a lone street urchin being pounced on by a tyrannosaur passing in the night. The end. <laughs>